Greetings, people. Hello. Uh, we got a pretty interesting panel here today. I think uh, we're going to start off with some quick intros and then dive into what's been going on last week, which was pretty crazy. And then we'll talk about web stories. Um, so quick intros, Tabor, Saad, Danny. But before we start, oh, Chris James is in the room. Oh, 10 Chris years. James. Everybody round of applause for Woo! Chris James. Now stand up, Chris. Come on, get up. Come on. 10 years. 10 years. 10 years. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah. Last time I was here, he was moderating, but he's well, got too big for us now. You're too big for us? No, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still here. Sorry. Thank you. Tabor, you can now go. <laughs> uh, I'm Tabor, and I am the CEO of A Thinking Ape, and we make um, sort of mid-core games with a more casual uh, theme on them. So our biggest game is Party in My Dorm, and it's a college simulator that's secretly uh, a 4X game, and that's sort of our, uh, our niche. Uh, I'm Saad from Miniclip. Um, upset that the other Saad wasn't here. <laughs> I'm not, not being on a panel with two Saads. Um, Miniclip, um, we've been around for 21 years, browser games, then started in mobile. Um, April Pool, we acquired Cybo two years ago, so Subway Surfers. And then I guess the other game, which is not much of a secret now, but Triple Match 3D, published under Boombox. I think everybody knows that's us at this point now. We were trying to be clever. Um, we're not. Yeah, <laughs> clearly not. Um, so yes, that's us. Danny Moy, uh, Chief Strategy Officer at SciPlay. Uh, we're predominantly social casino right now. Um, we've been trying to expand uh, lightly, I guess, into the casual space uh, via IAA games. Um, that's, that, yeah, that's who we are. Great, and I'm, I'm Sam Gaglani. I'm the EVP of uh, Global Business Development at Exola, and I'm happy to call three of these companies our partners. And uh, thank you guys so much for coming today. I know it's a busy day for you all, so I appreciate it. So um, I think we, do sh we probably should talk about all the craziness that happened last week and all the swirl about Apple and Epic and what happened and you know all the gray areas that seem to be have been created. I think for me, the key takeaway was they're still going to charge you for steering people uh, inside of the app to a store, uh, and that's going to be 27%. Um, and I think the key takeaway that I got was it just gives you more of a reason to build a really unique and powerful web store experience. Um, for you guys, I'm very curious to see what you think about what happened last week and if that will be a, basically a repeat of what's going to happen in March for uh, the Digital Markets Act. Anyone can go first. Saad. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like, look, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting time. Um, I just don't know how censored I need to be, as we talked about. I got it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think, look, it, everybody needs to have a web store now. I think that's, that's yes. just happening. Um, clearly, the platforms are taking an aggressive stance against... Um, what the regulatory environment is. But I think at the end of the day, all of us are on this stage and obviously we partner with Exola. Um, many of us are starting to see significant revenue come through our web stores now. And that's yeah. without doing any of the things that if the DMA you know, comes into force and we understand how some of these policies are, are being constructed, we don't really push anybody into our web store at the moment, you know, yes. save for a, a, you know, a few things that we've done in the past because obviously Miniclip comes from a web background. I think maybe you guys did some social games, no? Not, 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 not as much. Um, so, so for us, there was always that kind of history of people paying and we actually had some users who were still kind of using the web version yeah. as well. So that, that kind of helped. Um, and, you know, I'm t I think we're all safe to say some of our games have 30 percent of their revenues going through web store now yep you know i think that's we're pretty common higher. for all of that right <laughs> yeah on our side we, we we just we're still like testing optimizing ramping so we're probably not as high as a percentage as you just quoted um like you know so one i agree with you so this year and going forward web stores and direct-to-consumer experiences are going to become increasingly more important um now it's about okay how do you at least for how we think about it, is how do we expose our players to it, right? Um, obviously, without, you know, without explicitly, like, violating policies, 
Um, but for us, it's really about, about focusing on the player experience. It's always been like that. Like, you know, the ones that you're going to initially expose that web store experience is people that already play and pay your ga- uh, pay in your game. So it's already working today. So our mindset is like, look, it's not broken. So don't, you know, create too much friction and don't cause something, you know, artificial that's just not natural for the player. Like today, they're already like paying. I'd rather get that dollar today than not, you know, and then creating some friction and potentially not getting that dollar from that payment uh, from that player. Right. So we're really meticulous and methodical about, okay, how do we expose it to the player and then giving them the right experience so that they feel comfortable, they feel safe. And they feel that, you know, at the end of the day, there's added value, right? Um, until we figure out how to do things exactly inside the app, there is going to be a little bit of friction. But, you know, from a player perspective, they just need to understand like, hey, by me going even through a little bit of player friction, that there's true value, um, you know, for them. Any, any opinion? Yeah, so I think on the topic of, you know, Apple and Google, um, is this being recorded? Yes. Um, yeah, I think you should... Uh, <laughs> Never jeopardize your relationship with Apple and Google. Um, however, uh, the way that we approach it is we kind of think about how do we create a connection with our customer? Um, you know, they find us through the app, the, through the app stores, but really we have people who've been playing our games for 10, 15 years, and we want to create connections with them so that um, no matter what happens, they're our customer. And so that's our goal is to find ways to service the customer, however they want to be serviced. Some people... Um, maybe you're playing on multiple devices. They might be playing across multiple stores. They might have 10 accounts and you want to figure out how to give them the best experience possible. And some of them, you know, live in other countries where payment profiles are different. And so it's all, all about connecting to your customer. And we have this pillar in our studio, which is anybody who becomes a customer, we should try to make them a customer for life. And so we're trying to create, um, you know, these direct connections with the customer so that they stick around. Only a small percentage of your users is going to convert to an IAP. And so you should be building those connections, and yeah, that's how I think about it. You, okay, so yeah, do you want us? Do you want us to be a bit like like real about what's happening? Let's be real, sir. Okay, so <laughs> right, I don't know Apple. this guy. Here we go. Let's go. All right. So, <laughs> d- d- who here thinks? And this is no bad against anybody who works there, because let's be honest, all of our Apple account managers are great, right? Absolutely. Right? No, <laughs> but they are. They're great people. They really, you know, they've really tried to to help us as an ecosystem, but. At the same time, it's always been clear to me that Apple doesn't really care about games. That's my view. Who else believes that's the case? One, two, well, not enough of you, clearly. So, all right. Some, a lot of our Apple Arcade money in here then, clearly. So, um, so I, I think Apple hasn't really worried about games, but what's happened through Epic, you know, going through, you know, basically flying the flag for developers on this, this thing, what I think we've established is, and what they've probably established is, oh, wow, well, actually, a lot of this revenue comes from, from this category. Yeah. Right? And they'll point to, I know Apple, Apple will say, so, oh, well, we have a games tab on the App Store. And it's like we have the Today thing and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But, okay, three, four years ago, was organ- Organics higher or lower than it is today for everybody? Higher four years ago, right? So Organics has gone off. So, okay. So the stores not really helped us in terms of that, which is actually what they're what they're really there for, right? That yeah. that was the value exchange. That was the value prop. Yeah, and I think you know, Exola, having worked with you guys from the web days for for many years, yeah, I think what Tim was showing at Epic was, yeah, but this is payment processing now, pure. It's pure payment processing, and that's why you know Exola's on our lanyards, right? <laughs> because. <laughs> That's what's happening, right? The customer experience, and that's why the web shop experience that we're all going to create and how we want to engage our communities becomes really important. Yeah. The payment processing, you guys have handled that for the last, I mean, what, 15, 20 years we yeah. work together yeah. almost? long time. Long time, long right? Long time. So what are the platforms doing, in, in particular Apple, to really a- add the value there, right? Well, you talk about friction. Apple Pay is a separate API to the App Store. You guys could already dig into that right so again that's even more payment processing so you know i do have sympathy for google i I think google does a much better job in adding value in helping us and i think they've got much more robust developer tools and they've had much more engagement um, with us than others and i think you know when that was how they applied the ruling i'm just saying oh it's 27 percent all that stuff 
it just felt like they weren't really trying to engage again. And they're just trying to protect that wall garden again. And I think that's where ultimately we will see this get more difficult as time goes on. So I don't know how the policies will change. That's the issue. I, I, I agree. And I, I want to let Danny and you know, yourself weigh in, but I totally agree with you. I think that 27% is going to stick around for a while. They're going to make it incredibly hard to you know, go lower. And it just points to a, the fact that if you're going to try and monetize outside of those stores, you need a powerful web store. Um, and I think everyone understands that, but it's now about understanding what that means to create a powerful web store, how to behaviorally train users to go there and then retain them in that ecosystem. And you guys have done a really good job at that. Um, but I do want to let you guys weigh in on what Saad just said, if you want to. <laughs> wait, being recorded, right? Wade, tr wait carefully. Uh, I mean, I think you kind of said it all. I don't, I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> so you agree? Just say. I, 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 yeah, maybe. Okay. <laughs> See, they're like the. It's like the Illuminati. They're, they're not even not here. <laughs> they're not everywhere. Here. They're in my pocket. Damn I'm sure Johnny's in the back somewhere. <laughs> I mean. Like, I agree with everything that Saad has said. It's like, you know, historically, you know, there were probably a lot of reasons why you can justify that 30%, right? Um, like Saad said, a lot of it came from that distribution and, and that marketing, right? Helping you get in front of the players. Like, but that just, that's just not as abundant, right? We all know, right? Like the whole organic and the featuring and all that is just, it's just not there. And it's also not as effective. And then effectively, they're just providing a, um, they're a payment processor, right? At the end of the day, right? So you know, any business person is going to sit there and be like, it should it cost me 30%, you know, just to help me process like a payment. Yeah. Um, so that's just a reality. And I think it comes down to, I don't know, you know, I think maybe there's always been a debate on who actually owns the customer, right? You know, at the end of the day, we as games, right, we work hard and we pay a lot of money, right, to acquire that customer, right? We want to be able to have access to that customer and communicate to that customer as much as possible, right? And, you know, introduce them to like new ways to potentially play the game, more engaging ways, and even like new ways to to pay, right? So I think it, it, a lot of it's going to come down to that debate, like who actually owns the customer? Like the, does Apple actually really own the customer or do we like own the customer? Is it like joint? But, you know, for game developers, we always feel like, hey, we own the customer. We work hard just to like I said, not only to acquire it, but to maintain, right? Like we also have this philosophy. It's all about player retention and also payer retention, right? Like we try to retain them for life, just like you guys do. So, you know, we, we're out there like fighting and battling. We're going to have to find, you know, different creative ways to continue to engage that player, communicate with that player and figure out how to, you know, prolong their, prolong their, you know, activity within our ecosystem. I think the thing that confuses me is I don't know what the end game is for for Apple either like I don't that's what I don't understand Fair that's enough. what I yeah. find frustrating is not that they want to have control over their own ecosystem that makes sense I just don't other than battling epic because for whatever reason I don't see what their end game is here for making developers um, want to be on the platform and something you know I don't want to say too much about bad about Apple obviously but um, I was really alarmed that they actually published a puzzle game in the App Store so they have a puzzle game in uh, news and they're self-publishing it. And that was pretty alarming to me. Mm. And mm. as a developer, I see that and I see this ruling and I have, yeah, a lot of frustrations and questions about the relationship and it's difficult to know what the end game is. And, and you know, you have your Apple rep and you work with them on a specific set of, of goals within the app store. But overall, I don't know. Oh, I'm supposed to pick up my kid from school. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's Apple calling you. That's Apple. <laughs> You've been rejected. Yeah, we're rejected. rejected. <laughs> that fast. <laughs> that next bill, that next submission is not passed. Oops. Sid Saw, did you want to say something? I thought. I... No, I was just like, I think the, they're vertical, right? So when they publish the puzzle game and they do all this stuff, we've seen we've seen how that goes. Yeah. Um, you know, it's the same with content. They have Apple TV Plus, right, as well. So correct. I think yeah. that I think that is where they will go. But that also they know that they can't make the experiences we make as well. I think what is interesting though is it's very interesting that whenever you're trying to launch a new platform, you know, they got the the visor coming, right? Yeah. They're gonna lean on games. They're gonna lean on that. They need the content. content. They need content. Yeah. And I think 
it's it's it, it is going to be interesting how they try and engage developers with, with developer community it's a push pull relationship right now i mean they i mean they've done some stuff which we've looked at where they've support certain developers and doing some things but then mm -hmm. not other developers and other things and it's i mean I, I mean if i was in the social casino space i've been frustrated with all platforms for a long time because they've just you know they've not supported you guys for years but still taking the revenue shares uh for, for you know from now until and actually that's just changed recently hasn't it and that's interesting in terms of rng on google right uh, you mean developers and publishers yeah uh yeah so i mean yeah, I would say traditionally, you know, casino is probably an uh, overlooked category or genre by the platforms. Um, but it's got it, it's improved over the last couple of years. You know, as you as you explain to them like how the industry like works, the type of games. You know, at least in my opinion, they start to realize it's you know it's like any other free to play game, right? It starts with that simple core loop, um, and then you try to monetize around it with with some type of meta and live ops, and that's what's going to drive the the monetization and the revenue. So. It's just like any other game that's out there, you know, and then, you know, it's, it's not for me to decide, you know, it's, it's someone's like personal opinion, whether or not it mimics like, you know, real money, you know, uh, gambling or, or real money gaming, or it assimilates that, but you know, that's, that's not a conversation for here or there. Um, but yeah, like for a long time, it's, it's like, you talk about like the support that developers used to get, like, I'm pretty sure social casino did not get that at all. Right. <laughs> like zero. Right. So, yeah. It's even more of a, um, of more of a, a battle and a war out there, you know, for social casino when we go and acquire and and reacquire and retarget like players, right? So, again, you you spend a lot of not only money on it, but a lot of hard work and effort, and we're gonna, you know, we have to in order to stay competitive, we have to do everything that we can to try to figure out how to retain that player, you know, in in the ecosystem. Yeah. So I, I, what I what I'm hearing when in the kind of the general sense I've been getting like this week and last week was a, that Apple's going to definitely hold the line. There's a big sense of frustration among game developers and uh, publishers about creating these incredible games yet giving away a big chunk of it away. And that's where I think these web shops have become a really powerful tool to shift players out of those marketplaces and onto a store you own, create, and you know can retain those players for a long time. So, and we... Or we only have 14 minutes. So I want to talk about like, because you've done a really good job with creating a web store. What were like the big challenges, A, of setting it up, understanding how not to blow up your economy. And then once it's set up, making those players come back again and again and again. Because the one thing I've noticed with web shops sometimes is some of, some of the approach has been, it's just a top up page. And it's stale and it just stays there and you don't get a lot of people coming back to it. So it it, be, it almost becomes like this living organism that you kind of have to feed and tend to. So I'm curious like what you were faced with because your your experience I think is going to be different from what your experience is and your experience was. Yeah, so I think um, for us, we already had an email login system. Oh, wow. Okay. So we are a little bit ahead of the game because we could already connect with our customers directly. Yeah. Um, but it certainly made it more important and we spent some time making that system even better. Um, and so what we really focused on is once we have that connection with them, how do we service the customer in the best way possible? And whether that's through um, the Apple App Store or through the Google Play Store or through an Exola web shop, yeah. we want to make sure that the customer has as many opportunities to convert as possible at the price points that they want for the goods that they want. And once you have that sort of set up and you get a good relationship with your customer, you can sort of find ways to um, make it relevant to them to go to uh, to a web store. And what we actually see is some people who shop on on Exola will also shop on the Apple App Store. Yeah, it does. It's not it's not cannibalizing. It's not cannibalizing it. And we see a really good um, live ops um, venue for that. So we do a ton of live ops around the web shop, but we do that with all of our IAPs, mm -hmm. and we treat them a little bit differently. But the the fundamentals are, are still the same. Got it. So. To draw someone in, are you creating an expected value on that store that's significantly better than that what they would see on Apple or Google? Uh, not necessarily. So you have to be careful um, how you do those sales because you don't want people to, you know, get too much uh, stuff and wreck your economy. So you still have to be careful, yeah. like what you're offering. Um, but we do offer um, like a reward point system. So like a loyalty on the web shop. Yeah, okay. we have a loyalty program on the web shop, and um, and then we sell some goods that. Um, 
you know, players want in different like formats and different price points is the big Got thing. It. Players want higher price points than they can get. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Stores. And then um, you can also service customers directly and, and work with them to find interesting, you know, what they want in the web shop and you can publish much more quickly. So you have an ongoing dialogue with exactly. them. You have a really strong community where you're talking exactly. to them constantly. Yeah. And, and I think because our games are sort of structured around this like deep emerging gameplay where people are playing the games for a really long time, we've already built that habit with them of like, we're going to service you and we're going to give you the things that you want. And we have a good dialogue. We have a VIP manager that just focuses on people for who want to talk to us about what they want to purchase. And, and that works really well for us. So the other question I get a lot, and thank you for that, is well, I've got this web shop up and running. How many more resources do I have to allocate? Like I'm a small dev, do I have to hire a whole new team or are you just adding an additional workflow? Like that's a big question. I know you asked too when we were signing you up. Once it was built, it was just an additional workflow. Okay. Yeah, and got that, it. We run it all we run it all through the same um so the same back end. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. And sod for you guys when you Yeah, I mean, uh I don't want to have to build a web shop. <laughs> I'd rather not build a web shop, yeah. but you kind of you, you, you kind of have to. Well, it's it's kind of similar to Table saying we've had Miniclip login since the the web days, so we've kind of carried that over. And there's yeah. still a lot of users who would prefer that over some of the other platforms. So we've 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 maintained that. Um, I think we're still learning what's the optimal way. I think everybody thinks it's going to be give additional value, but that's not that's not enough. You know, that's, I agree. That, that's not enough. If if you think it's just like you know, pop up page, web web shop. Oh, I'm just going to give a discount on the other tiers. Yeah, that just doesn't work. There's mm -hmm. there's no real point in doing that. I would yeah, discount versus value. Then there's a big difference there. I think value added bundles versus just cheapening the product. That's the right. That's right. That's yeah. the fine line you have to draw. And when we talk about bundles that have value, I think, and this is something you guys have done a really good job at, is creating a bundle that maybe there's something in game that you could get, but now you can just buy it outright. Now you're giving them a value add. And from a social casino perspective, how have you guys, because I know you've started very incremental and very slow and you're testing it. Yeah, so I would say two quick learnings is, one is it's not a one size that fits all, like, right? So yeah. there's there has to be some level of uh, personalization and customization. That's how our games work today already. Our games... Most of our games here, I think, um, except for your newer game, um, is you know you have a you have a pretty mature user base, right? And there and it, you, and you develop a lot of segments within that user base, and each segment has a different play behavior, different pay behavior, and they have different economies behind it, right? So that's kind of the second learning lesson, like hey, because it stems from the first one, the one size is not going to fit all, and then over time we're just going to have to customize, you know, what we're showing, you know, based on that segment. And their, and their behavior. So for some segments, you know, I think for, I think probably for the most part, what we're seeing the early data is that you can't just do like a, a straight discount. Like it may work early on, but the novelty of that will start to wear off. Um, and then also you have a potential, like Taylor said, you could wreck the economy on on some on some segments. So you know what we've learned is that it's got to be some type of value add. And then the value add, you know, comes you know it could be in the form of bundles or maybe some other thing that you can't necessarily like pay or earn inside the game um, but you could do it from here and then you could bring it back into the game so again there's just a lot of we're early on that's one but two there's just data that's constantly coming in and just like you know that's how free to play mobile games work right data comes in every week or every month and you just have to continue to iterate um, to find that you know right balance and even when you find that right balance guess what it could potentially change the next month right so you kind of back to like iterating to see what works the best thank you so the other big question I get is the, how do you overcome the friction of getting those users into the funnel? They're having to enter new payment information sometimes, uh, or they're scared to go to that site. Are you guys using, no, you're not seeing that? They're not scared. Not sc I, I get that. Sometimes. People buy stuff all over the internet all the time. <laughs> it's 2024. Come on. So I think it's more casual. We push on Exola, right? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you have those credentials, right? Don't don't make them type them in again. Well, right? it's I, I've noticed when it's more of a casual game, if it's like a child having to go to the parent and say, hey, I want to buy this thing. It's not an iOS. Is there, a, and it doesn't sound like you have to deal with that. Sometimes we get that where someone's like, I don't know what this charge is. And so your mm -hmm. kid bought some stuff on Exola. We, we try not to let kids buy stuff. So Got it. first thing, but it happens, but like, it's not a problem. It's not a big problem. 
No, no, but it, but it is different between casual and, you know, more. Yeah, core. it's a different like, demo, it's a for sure. different demo. And there's definitely different. Th I think casual, you know, I think the, it's single digit nearing double digit percentage of revenue at the moment. Yeah. You'd expect from casual because of these issues. Yep. Um, but I think on core, you can get 30% up in terms of the revenues you can generate. I agree. So that, I think that's just the perpetual trying to get over the hurdle. You guys have to build a, a, a better product for that. And we have to build better web shop experiences for yeah. that too. I mean, casual is, you still need to figure it out. Because I think when you talk about how do you get users into this stuff, you, you leverage your Discord channels, you leverage your WhatsApp channels, right. your Telegram channels. Yep. That's the way to, to really do that. And if you haven't done that, then that's also when you build web shop, you are building community. That's the whole point. That's, it's that's direct to consumer. Thank you. Know. you. So th this really goes back to how do I communicate to that user that the shop exists without violating guidelines? So what's funny is we all thought we were direct to consumer by going through Apple and Google. But when you do your own <laughs> web shop, you're like, oh no, we're now really direct to consumer. Yes. That's the difference. Yes. Yeah. And so have you guys, and I know you've been pretty good. I, it sounds like you have a really strong community. You already had access to them. But if you're not, that savvy or you don't have that how would you counsel someone we locked out i think in that our players just talk about where they're talking about a strong it. yeah they're like oh community right? yeah it's a really strong community we have chat in game yeah so like that's really useful and wow okay we have an email list and we've been collecting emails for a decade so wow. made it easier but i mean i don't know what i would say to somebody that's not doing it. do that first yeah get an email yeah. login yeah. like you need to own your relationship with your customer Going forward, that's just the table stake. Name in the game, now. right? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know for casual. Like, I don't make casual games, so like, I can't. Speak. But I agree with you. Like, if I, if I, if I step back, like, say, ten years ago, and before we knew this, or if we knew this was all coming, um, to sort of ahead, I would say, develop as many direct touch points as you can with your customers, right? So, for the longest time, like, you know, we were we basically had guest accounts and relied on Facebook login, right? And you know how you know, the, 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 the connect rates on Facebook login has been, you know, dwindling for like years. So we kind of like fell behind. It's like, okay, now people aren't even connected. Like we have no direct touch point. So I can go back in time. It's like, you know, do the, do the logins, do your own email login or your own form of login. Um, if you can collect like phone numbers, great. Like definitely like email addresses because you're going to need a way to try to, to contact them. Um, like if I can go back, that's one thing that, you know, we would probably do differently. Like just or to if get you were building a game right now. Or, yeah. yeah. Partner with someone like HelpShift and have like the data for your CMs, your customer support and community managers. Have the like purchasing data just like on everybody's dashboard that says like, look, someone just came into the game and they've played, they spent more money today than most players spend. Reach out to that person directly. That's a person Start talking to them. Yeah. Get their email address. Create a connection. Yeah. Like, like can you imagine a business where like somebody comes in and they spend ten thousand dollars and you don't they capture their information and yeah. yeah you don't capture their information and then you're just like well i guess we'll uh, do some more marketing and get some more of those <laughs> like that's insane like no business operates like that like treat your business like it's a restaurant at this point like build customer connection but this is going back to what you just said which was we just relied on apple and google to do that for us and now there is this shift to an e-commerce retail mindset that i don't think a lot of publishers and developers that are newer understand right it it's second nature to somebody like me because i came from that business but now when i talk to people they're like oh we didn't think about that and these are kind of like basic tricks of the trade you would employ so you have to be creative you have to think about how am i going to get to this user and put yourself in their shoes like what would i want to see on a store to make me buy it and continually go back to it so that's the funny thing just to add to that is like they're already your player. Exactly. That's the thing. So it's, it's not that, that they're already... You just never knew who it, they were. Yeah, exactly. Personally. They're already interested in what you're doing and what, yes. you know, and, and they want to engage with you. It's just, I think you do, do have to be careful about how you engage. But that's the thing. Like, we all talk about community. This is your community. Yeah. And it's just engaging them and trying to know a little bit more about them, where they're comfortable. That's the other thing that we should talk about as well. I think we're all sizable businesses, part of bigger groups yes there is legal gdpr compliance and all that stuff that everybody's talking about there is a lot of stuff that you have to do to collect some of this data and then store that data and that's not trivial and There's that's a lot where of work we kind of help solve that problem but yes um <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah we have to do two minutes okay so we have two minutes questions out there well, I mean, it's all a little bit. 
No questions? I don't believe it. Going there twice. has to be one question in the audience. Going twice. Going twice. Oh, we got one. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I sadly is from Worldline here, so I'm part of uh, a company that, pro uh, that processes card payments. The question was to Sam, I think you mentioned the 27% with Apple. Is that being confirmed globally or is that specifically? Just Europe? in the U.S. right now. And the U has, has Europe made a decision yet? I think you're going to find out in March what they'll do, but that's going to be regarding third-party payments and uh, side loading. But do you know anything about that in terms of what? Yes. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be yes. I don't know if I'm allowed to say here. Okay. There's a, there's a lot going on around that. Uh, I mean, but at, look, at, at the end of the day, I would prefer Apple and Google to win. I would, I, pr I really would prefer, I don't want fragmentation. I don't want side loading. Any, sim any semblance of chance where a user thinks twice about downloading an app is bad for our industry. Right. And I think we're all getting excited about this. But that is, there are going to be nefarious actors who will make that download and that install become difficult. And that's not something we want. We're not here to make it, you know, oh, let's take a quick buck by, by you know, making our players think this, this is another thing. So I think the DMA is very interesting. Side loading is dangerous. I don't think that's something that we want to have to happen. And so you do want Google and Apple to win. We've seen fragmentation before. In China, it was a really fragmented ecosystem and it wasn't helpful. It only, you know, from the last maybe three, four, five, six years has that fragmentation gone. You don't want to start doing that. I don't think it will be like that here in Europe. I, I agree with but, you. Uh, yeah. But I think, I think ultimately what we want is we do actually want Google and Apple to win on the security start side of things. We really need that. On the side loading. And so on side loading. Side, side loading. Okay. <laughs> well, or... or do a deal on, um, you know, payment processing and revenue share tiers and all this kind of thing. That are fair and equitable versus right, right. the crazy number. But I don't think, but I think what this has shown is that doesn't mean that there still is not space for web stores. Because Correct. you still yeah. need to engage the community. Yeah. You still want to engage those people. Anyway, sorry. Think, are we out of time? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, David.